Hello everyone and welcome to Everyday Seminar. Before we move on to today's lesson, let's go through the solution to last week's quiz. So the question was, why is it that we cannot solve a triangle given AAA or three angles using the sine law or the cosine law? Okay. Now here, the reason is because the possible answers are unlimited. So have a look at the two triangles below and notice that we can keep increasing the length of the sides whilst the angles remain the same. So notice how this is a smaller triangle, okay, and it becomes a larger triangle. Now the angles remain the same here, 57, 57, 36, 36, 87, 87, but the lengths of the sides have changed. So for example, this can be, say, three centimeters, or just, we'll just use a unit three, that could be five, and that could be, what, two? So that'll be, say for example, that could be six, and 10, and that will be four, okay? Just imagine it's being multiplied by two. So this can be a solution. You can have six, four, 10, the angles remain the same, and you can also have three, two, five, and the angles remain the same. In fact, you can even make this triangle smaller, a smaller triangle, and maybe that'll be 1.5, that'll be one, that'll be 2.5, and we'll still have the same angles, 87, uh, 36, and 57, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. So let's move on to today's topic. Okay, so today's topic is an introduction to calculus. Okay, we're just gonna go through the basics. We're gonna go through the a brief history and the explanation of key terms. So the key terms for today, uh, calculus, limits, differentiation, integration, the fundamental theory of calculus, and a function. So here's a brief history of calculus. Before Newton and Leibniz invented calculus in the late 1600s, people were basically analyzing everything looking at averages, okay? Averages, as you know, only gives us a general picture of an event, so it is not so accurate. Using this math tool, calculus, we can see the effects or forces, for example, as I'll show you, uh, on speed, acceleration, or distance, for instance, of a falling rock at every point in time. So calculus, therefore, is sometimes called the math of motion and change. So let's see this in more detail. Why is calculus important? Say, for example, we have a car moving, okay, uh, first second, it's going at 12 meters per second. Just imagine this is a straight line. Okay, so that's very easy to calculate, the average velocity. Um, now another example, imagine this car is uh, speeding up, accelerating. At the first second, it's going four meters per second. The second second, it's going to eight. Third, 12, and the fourth, 16. So it's a straight line, constant acceleration. So this is very easy to calculate too. Remember the length of a triangle, half the base times the height for a triangle? So that's very easy to do it as well. Now, why is calculus important? Imagine you have a curve like this. Imagine the car slowly speeding up, going very slow, and then all of a sudden goes very fast. Okay, imagine a car moving like that. So if you have a graph like this, it's very hard to find the average speed. Okay, a lot of people in olden days would just take here, uh, and make one triangle like that, and then they'll find the, uh, for example, the area or the speed using the triangle. But calculus can help us use every little point, okay? So calculus is more accurate than using the average. Okay, calculus, calculus looks at the gradient or slope at every point. More on this real soon. So what does calculus include? Um, for simplicity purposes, we're gonna cover these four topics. Limits, differentiation, I'm gonna go through the basics of integration, and also a brief introduction into the fundamental theory of calculus. So our first topic, limits. In mathematics, the concept of a, of a limit is used to describe the value that a function or sequence approaches as the input or index approaches some value. So we'll have a look at that expression. 
Okay, the first expression means that f of x of the function x can be made to be as close to L as desired by making x sufficiently close to C. Sounds difficult, huh? In that case, the above equation can be read as the limit of f of x, the function x, as x approaches C is L. Okay, as the value of x gets closer to C, function x is equal to L. In addition to limits at finite values, functions can also have limits at infinity. So for example here, look, look at that equation right there. The function of x is equal to 2x take away 1 over x. Now say we substitute x as 100, then that will equal to 1.99. Now if we make x uh, 1000, that L will be 1.999. If we make x 10,000, so L will be 1.9999. You notice it's getting closer and closer to 2, okay? It won't hit 2, but it'll keep going, get very close to 2. So, as x becomes extremely large, these numbers, the value of the function of x approaches 2, gets closer and closer to 2. And the value of, of f of x, or the function x, can be made as close to 2 as one could wish, just by picking x sufficiently large. So if I want to get 1.9999999999, I have to make x equals to perhaps that much. <laughs> okay. In this case, the limit of the function of x as x approaches infinity is 2. In mathematical notation, so as x moves to infinity, you can get larger and larger, this equation will get closer to 2. Okay. That's just one of an example's of what a limit is. Okay, three, two, one, and action. The next uh, key topic under calculus is called a differentiation. So differentiation, sometimes it's called differential calculus, is simply the process of finding the derivative, which is a measure of how a function changes as an input changes. Okay, how a function changes as an input changes. In other words, a derivative can be thought of as how much one quantity is changing in response to changes in some other quantity. For example, the derivative of the position of a moving object with respect to time is the object's instantaneous velocity. So another way to put it is differentiation helps you to find, what do you call the tangent to a slope? It helps you find m, and m is the slope as we've done in the past, or the gradient. Okay, so differentiation helps us find the slope or the gradient of a line. Okay, you notice this is going up and then it comes down, the gradient is going down. So you have a low value, it goes down and then goes up again. Now there are two ways to write differential functions. Um, the following function, now watch, see this function, y equals x squared. We can use the Leibniz notation, okay dy over dx is equal to 2x, it's differentiated, it's 2x, and I think as popular in uh, Japanese schools, the Lagrange's notation. So f dash x is equal to 2x, okay? Uh, more on this later when we go into detail on differentiation, but please remember, become familiar with these two uh, ways, these two notations of writing uh, differentiation uh, equations, f dash x and dy over dx. So the next key topic under calculus, sometimes called the integral calculus, integration. So it's simply the process of finding the integral or the antiderivative, the opposite of uh, finding the derivative and differentiation, which is defined informally to be the area of the region in the xy plane bounded by the graph of f, the x-axis, and the vertical lines, x is equal to a, and x is equal to b. Such that the areas above the axis add to the total, okay, and the areas below are subtracted. Uh, the symbol of integration is an elongated s, or a stretched letter s, and the s stands for sum. The definite integral is written as, as can you see? Okay, so we call that the integral 
of f of x with respect to x over the domain from a to b. So it may sound a bit confusing. Uh, we'll go through more when we go th uh, when we deal when we go in detail on the integration in our upcoming episodes. So this is just a basic understanding. Integration is basically all about finding the area under the graph. And finally, we have the fundamental theory of calculus, or the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, we've seen that the differentiation, it basically tells us the gradient or slope of a curve at a given point, and integration tells us the area under the curve. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus is basically a theorem that links the concept of differentiation and integration. So we look at the derivative and the integral, and we put it together, okay? Uh, we're gonna go through more of this later on. Here's uh, the key formula on the theorem of calculus. Okay, some of you may be familiar with this. The integral of f of x with respect to x over the domain from a to b is equal to the function of b take away function of a. So finally, what can we use calculus for? Real world uses for calculus. Calculus, as many of you may know, has been often referred to by many high school students as perhaps the hardest part of math, or even the hardest uh, subject to study in school. Ironically, it has so many uses in today's world, ranging from science to engineering, even economics. It helps us find optimizations or the best way people should do things. Okay, for example, how an engineer should construct a bridge, what speeds pilots should use when, when flying in an airplane, how doctors should position blood vessels, how our software designers, IT, could most efficiently design a program, and much more. It is one of the most important tools in uh, society and also one of the most important inventions ever in the, in the history of, of mankind. Okay, so that brings us to today's quiz. Where does the word calculus come from? What does it mean and why is it a good name for this branch of mathematics? Um, here's a clue before we finish. Have a quick look at this cartoon. So this kid is asking this man, how much for one drop? How much for a little drop of lemonade or this juice? And he goes, a drop I'll give you for nothing. So he's saying, oh, one drop, I'll give it to you for free. And then, so the little boy looks at the man and he goes, can I have a cup full of drops? Okay, what does that mean? Think about it. And thank you for viewing today's lecture. Hope to see you next time with Everyday Seminar.